What's up, everyone? We are live at 5 at Broadway.com. It is Thursday, October 25th. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Beth Stevens. And over there, who's that? It's Caitlin Moynihan. <laughs> I want you to introduce yourself. Uh, hey, Beth. Hey, Paul. Somebody very exciting just stepped in. One of our favorite people. Two one of the great time. ladies of the theater. Ooh. Sure. Two-time Tony nominee, Daphne Rubin Vega. Woo-hoo! Yes, Yay! she's here to talk about the horror of Dolores Roach. <laughs> I know all about this lady. I know about her and Daphne. Uh, so we're we're going to talk about it, but first, today's top five. I'm going to sing a little song, and it goes like this. I don't think you're ready for this casting. Oh, Thanks, no, she Caitlin. did not. OMG, she did not Check just do that. Check out her Insta story later. Um, <laughs> we have a member of Destiny's Child. Oh, that's what she meant. Yeah. Joining the cast of Once on this Island. Yeah, we are talking cool. about Michelle Williams. Michelle T. Williams when she's on Broadway because of the other Michelle Williams. Don't get confused. Right. This is, uh, so she's going to take over the role of Urzuli, mm-hmm. and she begins on November 30th, uh, replacing uh, Darlicia Cersei, who is just here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the goddess, just here, the goddess of love, yeah. who will play her last performance on November 29th, and uh, Michelle will play through June 2019. June. Oh, she yeah. signed June on. June 2nd. She's in it to win it. Uh, this is not her first time on the Broadway. Nope. She was in Aida. Mm-hmm. She was in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And she toured with The Color Purple and with Fela, Okay. Her personal favorite. So it's not stunt casting people. She's no. a lady of the stage, too. <laughs> there you go. That's what I was going to say. And there's a fine, fine line for these two actors to be reuniting. Wow, she's really on it today. She's digging deep. Um, <laughs> Anne Harada and Jordan Gelber, who, for the older set that saw Why, don't it. look at me when you say that. What? <laughs> Excuse because, you. <laughs> because they were, <laughs> they were in Avenue Q together. So Christmas Eve and what's his name? I the comedian? I don't remember. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to ask it's me that It's still running, Beth. It's off-Broadway. And you know who's in it? Who? Giselle Jimenez, who was in Miss You Like How with Daphne and Vega. Yeah, that's true. Uh, anyway, they are reuniting in Holiday Inn. Yes. At Paper Mill. They will be playing Louise and Danny. Um, <laughs> Why are you saying it like that? Because it's like an old-timey show. It's, okay. I'll give it to you. Uh, Paige, f- f- I don't, I don't want to say her name. F- Fior? Fior? I'm sorry, Paige. I, I actually should have asked Fore. you. Fi- Fore. F- f- why can't I say it? I don't know it? how to say You're it. Right? I don't know. You're right. I just saw her in The Heart of Rock and Roll out at Old Globe. And uh, oh. she's fantastic. She's playing Lila Dixon. Jeff Creedy, who's great, is Ted Hand. I'm not going to say everyone's great. Are you going to say are. everyone in your Haley old time is Linda Mason. She's fantastic. Nicholas Rodriguez, very dashing. He's Jim Hardy. Anyway, it's a really good cast out at the paper mill. Gordon Greenberg is directing, and um, he did it on Broadway, Broadway. Yeah. with his Broadway choreographer, Dennis Jones. It's running November 21st through December 30th. Oh, and little Ian Harrell and Aiden Alberto are mm-hmm. alternating in the role of the cute kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you now have another whole week to see this off-Broadway play. So this is Lynn Nottage's Fabulation. Uh, this is her 2004 play. It's a revival of it. It was supposed to close on December 30th. Now it's running through January 6th at the Signature Theater Center. Of course, Lynn Nottage has two Pulitzer Prizes. Because she's just that good. Yeah. Um, this tells the story of an African American publicist who stumbles down the social ladder after her husband steals her hard earned <gasps> fortune. Yeah, that face that Caitlin has, that one. Um, it begins previews on November 19th and opens, opens on December 10th. And it stars Sharice Booth, Maya Botang, uh, Marcus Callender, and Jay Bernard Calloway. <laughs> and save the date for high school's biggest night in theater. Yeah, so the Jimmy Awards are this really Big cool deal. event. Every year for high school theater kids, uh, it will happen on June 24th at the Minskoff at 7:30. Uh, of course, the awards are named after James M. Niederlander, and it was founded in 2009. Um, they're actually the National High School Musical Theater Awards. But what they do is they bring kids from these pr- uh, productions all around throughout the year, right? And then they all perform on Broadway, and they announce the best performance by an actor and best performance by an actress. And we don't know who's going to be the nominated, but we'll find out at the Jimmy Awards. The gallery is officially open on Broadway. Happy opening to the Waverly Gallery, which opens tonight at the Golden Theater. 
Um, hey, Elaine May, welcome back to Broadway. Yeah, Elaine May. I did May. the voice again, the Holly Ann voice. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with you. Uh, <laughs> this is, uh, of course, Kenneth Lonergan wrote it. Lila Neugebauer directed. Elaine May stars along with Joan Allen, David Cromer, Lucas Hedges, and Michael Sarah. I have a couple other announcements. Mike Birbiglia is on Broadway tonight. Oh, yeah. The new one, the, the Mike Birbiglia's one. first Broadway show, correct? Correct. He's only been off Broadway before. That starts tonight at the Court Theater. I also want to alert you to uh, Stocker Channing was on Show People. Yes. Go check that out. Uh, what do we do with Wicked? Oh, the oh, trailer. The did new you know Wicked it's trailer. Wicked Month? Did you know that? Huh? It's, it's Wicked Month, Paul. We haven't said it yet. It's Wicked Month, you guys. <laughs> Next week. 15th. <laughs> Daphne did that, so I'm I just doing followed it. I'm her. Not doing it. Uh, n next Tuesday is the 15th anniversary really? of being at the Tavern on the Green for Dina Menzel and Kristen Chenoweth's opening night. Uh, 15th anniversary of that. Uh, so there's a new trailer. It's very exciting. Mm. It's like a sneak peek of the movie that will come eventually. Um, also, Lady in Red, episode number seven. Right? Yes. Only one Samantha more Samantha Barks. Barks blog at Pretty Woman. Stay and to the end because there's a little Halloween surprise. Oh, look at that inside tip. <laughs> and also, uh, there's a new video with the cast of Torch Song. So check all that out. And Beth, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. I'm going to get hey, out of the way. Caitlin, Daphne's here. Why don't you tell us more about today's guest? Yes. Guys, today we have two-time Tony nominee Daphne Rubin Vega in the studio with us today. She's currently lending her voice for the brand new podcast, The Horror of Dolores Roach, which is actually based on the off-Broadway play she did called Empanada Loca. Uh, she was nominated for a Tony Award for originating Mimi and Rent on Broadway, and she also earned a nomination for her performance in Anna and the Tropics. Uh, Daphne's other Broadway credits include The Rocky Horror Show, Les Mis, and A Streetcar Named Desire. This podcast also features current lifespan of effects star Bobby Cannavale. So it's we got a lot of news today. Be sure to follow Daphne on social media at Daphne Rubin Vega and leave, leave all of your questions for her in the comments down below. Please welcome Daphne and Paul. Oh, Daphne oh, Rubin Vega. Oh, How I adore you. <laughs> so happy you're here. I know. You know, she just reminded me actually, yes. and it is uh, it is Wicked Month and also it's almost Halloween and this is a very Halloween kind of uh, thing we're talking about today. But also the Rocky, what are we going to do for the anniversary coming up of the Rocky Horror Show? It's going to be 20 years soonish. Wow. What should we do? <laughs> I don't know. We should start planning now. I'm just something to think about. Well, you can start start calling Dick Cavett. Oh. I want to start. Calling is that that's, Dick that's where it all starts? It starts with Dick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to work on that. Uh, okay. So we have to talk about this. Do you podcast? I've been listening to you, not looking at you, just listening to. Which yeah. is kind of. I mean, I listen to. You know, your OBCs a lot. Mm -hmm. There's no Broadway cast record OBCRs. But to hear your voice, I, I feel like you really like been in my brain because I've been listening to The Horror of Dolores Roach. It's put out by what? Gimlet Media? Gimlet that Media. Called? It's a new yes. podcast yes. series. And you put it out just in time for Halloween. Yeah, it's a story. It's a it's a retelling of Sweeney Todd. Right. So um, it's not the musical. It's, a, it's the story. So I would be... Um, the equivalent of, of, of Sweeney and Bobby would be Mrs. Lovett. Bobby kind of Yeah, mm -hmm. people don't realize that Sweeney Todd actually wasn't a musical original. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, it, Broadway it, it, people just, yeah. it's like, what's La Boheme? I no, know La Boheme. The one you did. No, right, um, right, right. Yeah, so, sometimes so it's there's the a story, origin. so it's, yeah. <laughs> it's an urban redux. It is. It's an urban retelling. Well, of, I saw this Sweeney off Todd. Broadway three years ago, yes, right? Yes, you did. Three years yeah, ago. You did. It was called Empanada Loca. Yes. Uh, crazy empanada. That's correct. Um, you you were terrifying. Thank you. you. I was in uh, what theater you're was that? Welcome. Down at the, the um, at the labyrinth uh, at yeah. the bank Bank Street Theater. It was uh, very atmospheric and dark, and um, you you I think you ate a rat. I mean, it was like there was it was it was a lot to take in. Um, you were fantastic, so good. Yeah. I believe like award nominations and stuff. Like right, wasn't there like a hotel? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I just yes. like to think that you have a bunch of awards for all your amazing performances. <laughs> but that was one of them. And so this is sort of how did the so who wrote the play? Aaron Mark. Right. And right. and he wrote some and directed and Mimi O'Donnell who was the artistic director at the Labyrinth right. um, is now the executive producer of scripted content at Gimlet. Oh, so that's how this sort of came about? Yeah, so when it came to horror content, she just we it, it was just a a natural unfolding of events, and um, Aaron had had experience, like already unpacking the story mm. of of Dolores. So, so we we got a chance to 
to shift in. How and, much fun. Um, oh, it's a lot of fun. So, so you take this, so it's like all new, uh, the, what, eight episodes? Is that right? Eight episodes. Okay. Um, so for Aaron, is it, it's, it's sort of like a different medium, obviously, and the way you sort of break it up. Mm -hmm. And you were actually saying it's kind of, you don't necessarily have to listen to them in order if you well, sort of know where you're going. I, you said that for I like to experiment with um, not necessarily listening to them in order. I don't, I don't think you need to, but that's just me. I, I think that we created a podcast that was the kind of, um, creepy, you know, fireside novella, and by novella I mean like old radio play yeah. kind of thing. I love Do you it. know, War of the Worlds, uh -huh. um, immersive, yep. chilling, um, fun, creepy, hilarious, macabre. Yep. I want to brag about Bulga. who else is, because yeah, Bobby Cannavale, who by the way is fantastic in Lifespan of a Fact. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Um, he's joined you for this, and the, uh, can I brag and talk about these other people? You yes, know, There's please a lot do. of guest stars, ready? Yeah, no, it's my dream team. <laughs> okay, Abigail Spencer, yes. David Zayas, yes. John Douglas Thompson, Keita Updike, Giselle Jimenez, who we already mentioned, uh, Michael Yuri of Torch Song, Richard Kind, Margaret Cho, Elizabeth Rodriguez, Noah Robbins, Vanessa Williams, and maybe the best for last, Lilius White. That's fantastic. I what know. a great group of people. Yep, I'm a lucky, lucky So how lucky So person. how was this amazing cast gathered? And I, I mean, was it just a lot of... We asked them. Reaching out. And we reached out and we said, it. we're going to do this. And um, this is a very special project. And mm -hmm. do you want to do it? And they said, yes. I love it. Yeah. So is it, how does it feel to have it out there and have people listening to it and um, reacting to it? You know, we're right at this sort of litmus test where, um, you know, the rubber hits the road. People are like, yeah, you know, it's a little, it's a lot. It's a lot for me. And, yeah. um, and you know, yeah, it's a lot. So I get it. And, um, and some people are like, oh, my God, I, I love it, yeah. you know? What do you think we should like? Is it like light candles? Turn the lights down? How should Absolutely. We, how, it's not really like a, like during your commute. Although you can do. If it, you, you know like what? urban really um, humor, humor that gets grow like, yeah. Well, a lot it, of it is about. Uh, so Dolores has been in jail, right? That's yeah, sort of she's in jail after sixteen years. She gets out, and for, she for pot is that right for selling? Yeah, selling pot okay. um, for her her boyfriend. Actually, she right. took the rap yes, for I him. Yes, I remember that relationship. So yeah, so she she took the rap for her boyfriend and uh, did sixteen years, and gets out, and New York is completely different. Right. So the know? whole and, and the whole neighborhood has been gentrified. And, right. And it's so Washington a lot, a lot of Heights. Reacting yeah. to sort of like her, her, she's like a fish out of water. Yeah, it's very you know, it it makes a lot of fun of the way we look at class and race and culture mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the haves and the have-nots. And mm -hmm. I think that um, since Empanada Loca, you know, there was a lot to be said about cannibalism, you know, in culture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love how you laugh so, maniacally as you say it. <laughs> no, I mean, I just have to say that that was the spirit in which we created it. So I think that people who hear that are really getting off on it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it's that kind of creepy Halloween humor that's like, um, that, you know, threads cannibalism with, with gentrification. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so whenever you're involved, it's fun. Yeah. Uh, um, I have another uh, sidebar question. You are, are a Tony nominator. Uh, I am on a committee that yep. has a say, correct. Does that make you a nominator? Wait, what do you mean? It's like there's a group, there's a group of people that see shows. Yeah. Oh, is that too specific to say you're a nominator? Um, I... I think that at the end of the day, that they announced that you are. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like a secret. I'm sorry, it's been announced. I'm not like saying something I'm not supposed to say. Uh, but I love I like picturing you like going to see shows with like a clipboard, like glasses. <laughs> I like picturing you like being. Can there. I just tell you that? Like, I think you would take it very seriously. I first of all, I take it very yeah. seriously. I just saw Pretty Woman twice because oh, uh, because you, you were like, I need to see that one again. Well. Um, if someone is out, you need oh, to see yeah. everyone, of you know, yeah. so, so, um, yeah, well, I'm glad but I'm you glad know, wearing, know. wearing, 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 you know, black, like all of a sudden it's like, it's, 
you know, I don't want to. Because you want to be like very low well, key and not like... that I want to be very low key, but I realize that like wearing <laughs> wearing white is like just you know that uh, so like all of a sudden it just. So you're not kicking down the aisle in your Mimi pants. Yeah, you're not no, going out tonight no into the Nederland or to see Pretty Woman. Clothes. No, no, I did that already. <laughs> we did that multiple times. You don't ever do that anymore. Do you still what? have pants? Kick do you still have Mimi pants? Of course I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just making sure. Makes me feel good to know you have them. And I like to think that maybe like maybe you throw them on for your husband Tommy or I don't know. You no, know. Tommy is totally not interested in me. <laughs> I'd be more interested in you as Mimi than Tommy. Can I okay. tell you, I had dreams. I had a dream <laughs> once. This is amazing. Where I woke up and there was just like this, this, this shapeless blob of blue spandex and they were all these blue sp blue pants and they were all like sort of stretched and and you had a dream about your mimi pants like a pile of them a pile what do you think that symbolized all the pants you went like through they looked like sort of like sausage without the <laughs> sausage inside they looked like this sausage carcass. you're the sausage inside i was the sausage inside but there were like lots of them that is so deep i don't know where <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what else is going on? What else is going on in your life? Um, I'm a soccer mom. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes, I am. He's into soccer. Um, How old's your boy? He's 13. Okay. Wow. He likes to kiss me by punching me in the face with oh. his mouth. Okay. Or with his head. Punching me in the mouth with his forehead. Oh, that's sweet. That's the new version. <laughs> um, <laughs> Fortnite is an issue. Um grades, getting him to read something that isn't, you know. Yeah, you're a mom. It's good. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Um, what else? What else? Writing. Cool. Working good. on, you know. You're writing stuff. Yeah, my frequently unanswered questions. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And That's seeing right. shows and, not, and being part of a committee that maybe thinks about nominations. Yeah, you know, I'm part to of a committee a that life. also judges shows, mm -hmm. but they don't. My judgment doesn't count for anything. Mm -hmm. Yours, yours does apparently. Um, apparently. Apparently, <laughs> they've announced it. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. I love knowing that you're up there on that committee. Uh, hey, Caitlin, mm -hmm. are there any questions from the fans watching? Always. I'm sure. So Alexandra asks, "What's one piece of advice that you would give your younger self?" Lots of love from the UK. Oh, um, hmm. Wow. That's a good, good question, love from the UK. Um, take it easy a little bit. Be good, be good to yourself. It would be about self care. It would be about something about, it would have to do with self care and sort of kindness. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Love that. Um, what was it like returning to this story after doing it, one woman show off Broadway, to now having a bunch of people involved in it in a podcast form? I mean, has she been living with you for all these years? She has kind of been living uh -huh. with me. <clears throat> Excuse me. She has a different kind of life, I think. You know, there's a sort of time stamp on, on the events of the world since mm -hmm. Empanada Loca. So... So I think Dolores and the story have evolved um, according to that, um, to make room for other people to inhabit the characters mm -hmm. and, um, and let that happen was, was interesting, you know? It's like, oh wow, that's not the way you were in my head, mm. you know? That's not the relationship I had in my head, mm -hmm. so. You know, relationship with Luis when it's Daphne playing Luis is different than when Bobby plays mm -hmm. Luis. So that was fun, though. Was acting with just your voice? I mean, I know even when you record versus performing at a Broadway musical, record a song, it's very different. What, what was it like actually knowing that people weren't looking at you and just relying on your voice? I love it. I love the medium. I love the sonic medium uh, of it. And... That's why we wanted to create um, a podcast of our dreams, mm 
Mm. You know, one that would not just have actors, but that would have music and sound effects and yeah. subtleties like Foley, like real m detail, you know? Yeah. So, um, so that was really exciting and it was challenging because it's like, you know, you can, you can get obsessive <laughs> about minutia and, um, mm -hmm. and detail, so. But it is what's so special about the medium. Yeah, and um, I got to be a producer, ooh, and <laughs> have that kind of um, input. Uh -huh. And as an actor, <clears throat> being very vain and sort of measuring the quality of something according to the power of a cast around me, you know. Mm -hmm. In a way, it was like Daphne or Dolores was a kind of like a hole in the donut, you know. And then everyone else was so, so um, wonderful, so good, so on, on, on their mark that I felt um, totally supported. Were you there when everyone recorded their things? Or Most everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Mm -hmm. I love that. Awesome. Cool. So obviously we have quite a few Rent fans watching. And rent, rent fans? Questions. What's that? What's that? What's Rent? <laughs> um, so Alec would like to know if you ever go and see any regional productions or touring productions of Rent still. Yeah. Um, do I still see productions of Rent? I haven't seen a production of Rent in a while. I give shout out to regional productions. They all have my love. Um, and yeah, so so I don't know if I can answer that appropriately. I, I support them. I don't get to see as many as I'd love, but thank you. Keep it going, keep it going. Take it, own it, run with it. Absolutely. Yes, it's yours. It's cool that Lynn uh, manuel Miranda is doing that Tick, Tick, Boom movie. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, I'm so curious to see like what that will be and what, you know, what, what the shape of that will be. Yeah, Interesting. yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. I just did um, <clears throat> some stuff, uh, a show of, of, of Jonathan's unsung work, the mm -hmm. lesser known stuff, and it's just amazing how topical it is now, mm -hmm. you know? People yeah. are talking about how um, on point it is. It's like speaking truth to power kind of songs mm -hmm. that make more sense when there's a sort of turbulence going on. Yeah, it's amazing that you have actual memories of him and that that's something very few people have yeah you know it's amazing yeah that's what happens when you don't die yeah i love that we can do let's end on this question and it is what has playing dolores for so off and on in so many different ways taught you the most or what have you learned from her she seems oh wise God. i feel like you can learn a lot from this lady well um i love this character i love Dolores, what do I, resilience, um, survival skills, um, a sense of humor, incredible sense of humor. I mean, she's a, she's a pretend character, so in a way she's like, what would Dolores do? <laughs> um, she's just, you know, like if, if Dolores is around, like, you know, and she's got your back, you're gonna be okay. So it's WWDD, what would Dolores do? What would Dolores we, we need, do? We need to get that merch, let's get that merch printed. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. I love it. Cool. Is there anything else? Oh, the, no. I was There's like, oh. a, we're out of time. Yeah. We can't keep, we, we would love to keep Daphne Ben Vega here for hours, but uh, she has a life. She's a soccer mom. I know, I'm a soccer mom. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Hey, everyone, look up. It's the horror of Dolores <laughs> Roach. It's available everywhere you can get a podcast. Trust me, I've looked. It's like literally available. It's everywhere. It, it's everywhere. everywhere. You, you did a very good job covering all the bases. And the cast is fantastic, and you are amazing, and I adore you. And it's I adore always you. great to see you. Very good to see you. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can also listen to us in a podcast form or available on iTunes and Spotify by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Kate Reinders of Beautiful.